tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He is near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails. Tribal Welcome to Tribal Trails. We are here in Wiagamo Lake and we are visiting with Victoria Sachikabo. Thank you, Victoria, for being with us today. I'm excited about what God has worked in your life. So I'm interested in, in your testimony. Have you lived here all your life? Yes, this is where I was born. Beautiful place, w wonderful lake. Is this where you accepted the Lord? Yes. How long have you been walking with the Lord? Since 1982. 1982. Mm -hmm. How did you accept the Lord? I'm sure people were praying for me, and I know that my mother has um, prayed for me lots. I know she talked about the Lord when I was eight years old, but she wasn't Christian at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, she did say that the Lord was coming. Being eight years old, nine years old, I would look around and I would say, I would think, why would Jesus want to come? Mm -hmm. uh, we're having such a wonderful time. Aww. Not realizing that that was the open door mm -hmm. for her to start praying for me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then she became, she accepted the Lord and she kept praying for us as children. And she did pray for me lots. Mm -hmm. So about 13 years old, that's when I came to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, I drifted away mm -hmm. from Him. While I was drifting away, away from Him, I know He was still there for me. And He never left me, but it was me who went away from Him. King David said to the Lord, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So I came back to the Lord in 1982, realizing that I was a sinner, realizing down deep in my heart, only the Lord can help me where I was, and He sure did. So ever since that time, it's not that my path is just straight, it's not it's up and down, mm -hmm. but He has been, uh, been with me all those times, even though when I was in the valley, mm -hmm. uh, he's with me, and on top of the mountain, he's with me. He's with me everywhere, no matter what situation that I am in. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you have peace of mind like you've never known. But when things change and you're down in the valley, don't lose faith, for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. I worked um, since I was 15 years old, 16 years old. Okay. And then after a while, I, w I left the community mm -hmm. and I went to uh, Camp of the Woods to work for, for a while. Okay. And then um, I came back mm -hmm. and my parents were still living. Mm -hmm. 
my parents got sick, so I had to look after them. Or even when I was the cam at the camp, I was still looking after them from, from there, taking them out for their medical trips or just to help them um, with the doctor or whatever needs, whatever they, their needs were, I had to be there for them. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So then I just came back, and that's when I got married. Probably 13 years ago I got married. Oh, okay. Your husband is walking with the Lord? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You mentioned the Lord has been with you, you know, in the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to talk about some of the valleys that you've gone through, how God helped you? Um, when you have the Lord in your heart, the time that you ask Him to be with you or to come into your life, it's never ending of learning things from Him. It's constantly. And I know that up to this time, there's always a struggle in life. The things that, we, that we're struggling with, we're going to have that for the rest of our lives till, till we leave from this world or till Jesus comes. And struggle is the thing that will help us uh, to know more about the Lord or to bring um, our needs down to talk to Him. Mm -hmm. If we were never struggle, I don't think we would ever come to the Lord and ask Him to do these things for us or to forgive us what we had done or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, one of the struggles that I had, um, it comes every now and then, um, worriness, like I mm -hmm. was worried, okay, I would worried about my boys. If I would have to go somewhere, I'm worried what's happening now, what's going on. And um, I come to church, I never had peace unless if they're with me, and I'm okay. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Philippi, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So one time, I think not too long ago, I came to church and it was Wednesday night. My mind was just racing off to different things when uh, this man was preach was talking to us. And, um, and all of a sudden, um, it just seems that my mind just stopped and peace came. And um, when the peace came, faith came. And I trusted the Lord that He will take care of those things that I had on my mind when I was sitting there. And after that, I went home and told my husband so, and as I walked in, he said, I said, you know, I have peace in my, in my heart. I'm not saying that um, I'm never going to get worried, but I have to realize, you know, God is going to take care of those things. And yes, to this day, I don't have to worry. And I trust the Lord will take care of those things that I'm worried about at the time. And that's where I am right now. We talk of faith when we're up on the mountain, but talk comes easy when life's at its best. But in the valley of trials and temptations, that's when faith is really put to the test. And the God on the mountain
when things go wrong, he'll make them right. That's what God has been doing through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. On the cross, Jesus has taken away our sin. By faith, we can receive his righteousness. That's what you need to do by turning to him for salvation. If you want to do that, but need help, give us a call. As you're watching today's program, you've heard Victoria mention Jesus' return. It's an important doctrine in the Christian faith. Our next guest, Randy Jackson, spoke in the Reaffirming Truth Conference. His topic was Christ's promise of coming again. He started with John 14, where Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. First, Randy explains Jesus' promise in the light of the Jewish culture. In the context of that time, what would happen when people got married was they would uh, go back to their, when they were going to get married, they'd go back to their father's house and they'd build an extra room onto that house. They would just add a, add a part, you know. And then they would go and, uh, you know, when they were done, at some point they would go to wherever their wife or their, their uh, fiancé was and they would come and get her. And it could be any time of the day or night, but they'd come and they'd get her and they'd bring her back to the house. And we have that uh, that story, that analogy of the the bride bridegroom in Matthew twenty five, and he's putting it in their language, but he says, "I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'll come again and receive you, just like the the bridegroom would come and get his bride." And we have that analogy all through the scripture. It's a beautiful one of how Christ loves the church. But in this context of, of the Jewish system there, the rooms or the mansions in the father's house was where he took his, took his bride. And so Jesus very clearly is saying, I'm going to come and take you to where I am. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. And then we have in John 21, and we're getting into the idea of Jesus returning. You ever see those football games where the they ask the the uh, they pay the guy to go to say, you know, if he wins the title, he's going to say, "What are you going to do now? I'm going to go to Disneyland." <laughs> You ever hear, ever see that? He says, uh, what do you do now that you won the championship? I'm going to go to Disneyland. So Disneyland pays him a bunch of money to say that, right? But here we have a situation where Jesus is rose from the dead. What are you going to do, Peter? And you find out in, in John 21, verse 3, that Peter says, I'm going fishing. And so Jesus comes to the shore, and he invites them to have fish with him have to have breakfast with him. And they knew it was the Lord. In verse 12, it says, Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. It, it says, and yet none of the disciples asked him, who are you, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, 
do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And then he says something to Simon here. He says, most surely I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you walked, walked where you wished or where you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. And history has recorded that, that Peter was, was, was crucified on a cross. And he didn't want to be crucified uh, the same way as Jesus. I don't know if this part is true. It's a, it's a history. It's not in the Bible. The history has it that he was put on a cross upside down and dragged through the streets before he died. This he spoke in verse 19. It says, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. But after the Holy Spirit had come into his life and he preached the gospel for a long time. I want God's way to be my way And I journey here below For there is no other pathway That a child of God should go For the way may be dark Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following him, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? That was John who had asked him that, who had been close to him. Right? So he's saying, Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. If Jesus said that as a truth, that John might be even alive when I come back, Jesus is saying to them, I could come back at any time. And this key thing about Jesus could return at any time has not changed. Back when I was growing up in the 70s, we had those films, I don't know if you remember them, Thief in the Night and... uh, image of the beast or something and we had these 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 films about how Jesus could come back at any time and it was taught it was stressed you know that hasn't changed I'm going to say that again that hasn't changed and we call that in the in theological big big word terms the doctrine of imm- imminency in other, in other words imminent could happen any time it could happen soon and then John goes on to clarify this. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. So some of the people were thinking, well, maybe he's saying John is never going to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? If I decide that I want him to stay alive till I come back, that's not what. I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to feed my sheep, Peter. He had a job for Peter to do. Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Acts chapter 1, and Jesus had just talked to them and said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to set up the kingdom, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. That's another promise. Same Jesus is going to come back in the same way you saw him go. High upon 
the mountain where Jesus Christ ascended. An angel of the Lord declared it would be. He said, don't just stand there grieving for the one that you see leaving in like manners coming back. Do you work in the church, Victoria? Yes, I do. Prayer time. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Lord has worked in my heart. This was, I don't know how many years ago, it's quite oh, okay. a long time yeah. that um, we should pray. We should pray for our community. We should pray for the people. We should pray for the salvation of our the people around Lake. I mean, all those different things that we pray for. And we do it every Monday, unless if there's something that's happening and we cannot do it, then we don't do it. Yeah. Monday night? Monday night, yeah. yeah. A few of us, yeah. but we're going, we're still, we're still going. Jesus said, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. In Sunday school, I come to help when I need to. Um, I do the crafts for them at different times. Or Sunday school class? Sunday school class, yeah. When there's something going on with a conference or something like that, I help out with that. Boys and girls camp. Um, okay. My friend and I, we run it. Do you have it here in the community? We have it here. Okay. You work? Yes. Yeah, I've been working at the Christian school. I've been working since uh, 2006. What do you do there? Victoria. I'm a supervisor of a class. Okay. Yeah. I love working with children. Do you? And um, I have devotions with them every oh, morning. Do you really? Yes. And I just really enjoy talking to them. Yeah. There's 10 in our class. That is very mm -hmm. exciting. My biggest burden or my biggest wish when I w work with children is for them to know the Lord telling them about the salvation of the Lord and why he came and where and how he works right now. And someday we don't know how God plans for them in their lives right now. Maybe someday they'll be missionaries mm -hmm. and um, after knowing the Lord. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Victoria, uh, you shared a lot about uh, your work in the church and your work in the school. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your work at home. It took um, a lot to look after my mom mm -hmm. and my dad, but I know that I barely made a year when they asked me to look after children, mm -hmm. to take them in our home. Yeah. And we did. Foster children. Foster children. Foster children. Yeah. One of the things that I really enjoy is um, to have uh, devotions with them mm -hmm. and uh, to share how the Lord can save them and how um, the Lord can work in their parents' lives. And I know after a while they would pray too and they would pray for their parents, they would pray for their friends. And every kid that came, comes through, I try our best to share the Word of God with them every evening before they go to bed they want me to read the bible to them and pray with them and i noticed sometime they were talking to each other and they said you know one of them said maybe i'll be a missionary someday Aww. i'll go to africa or india or some somewhere and the other one says well i'll be here i'll be the pastor <laughs> and i'll collect the money for you <laughs> and i'll send the money to you you know 
yeah. for you to keep on going. I mean, oh. it was very cute how they yes. were saying how yeah. it got to in they got to the place where they understand how the Lord would work with them in their lives. Right on. Do you know that our guest is preparing herself to meet with the Lord at his return? Let's go to Revelations 22, where Jesus said, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his word. Some of you might wonder, what kind of reward will I receive? Well, it all depends on our relationship with the Savior. He said in John chapter 5, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Here God has revealed to us what to expect in eternity. Time is running out, and Jesus can return at any moment. If he is not your Lord and Savior, now is the time for you to change by choosing to follow him with your whole heart. Then his Holy Spirit will show you what to do to please God and empower you to do it then your life is changed for the better. So, what do you got to lose? If you need help, call us. I believe the time is nearing We're gonna soon see His appearing Oh, this could be the hour Oh, this could be the day When the saints from Every nation gonna lose their gravitation. 